for us, I think you know, CDAP is a at Google, CDAP itself is a special uh, you know, it has a special place, right? It, you know, it, what is CDAP? It is cast data application platform. I know it's mouthful, but what what we have done the CDAP the the the, the vision for CDAP originally was. Uh, there were few bright guys who are still with Google, who are part of Google, and you'll 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 hear from one of them in the later part of the presentation. Uh, they envisioned that look, you know, there were I, I don't know if you go back earlier to you know um, to the time when uh, the application servers were getting popular. Uh, the reason why application servers were getting popular is because customers were thinking about not having to implement very specific customized applications rather than they wanted to isolate the business logic on an application server so that they can actually you know separate out the the sources from which the data was actually um, you know coming in and the application business logic was isolated into uh, an application server and they could really build this massive applications at scale and reuse the core functionality that was there so they actually you know the the, the founder of this company and you know uh, and, and the CTO of the company, Nitin, their vision was when they thought about this, they said, okay, you know what, in 2010, back in, you know, if you look back, Hadoop was getting really popular and, you know, there were a lot of other data processing frameworks that were coming in. But one of the challenges all the users and the customers and the community was facing is whenever you have to build these applications, they are all custom applications and they are very brittle and things change and we were you know we were going on the open source community and things can change and new technologies come i think the vision was to to come up with a platform so that you can isolate and build something so that we can you can reuse it and you can churn out these applications to actually accelerate the the, the analytics or getting insights into the data that was kind of the vision and i think you know it's been you know a lot of times you know when we uh, when we talk about enterprise data integration, when we talk about you know app data analytics application and everything, you know what we have you know we, we were fortunate enough to invest in 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 CDAP, and we were able to actually embrace the technology at Google because uh, one of the things that we have done at Google is we we believe in open source and we believe in giving back to community, and we are trying to take this platform and make it available to everybody across the globe so that anybody who wants to actually build any analytics application or integration applications they can actually you know leverage this platform now i think if you go back and you know i want to go through and talk about the journey what we have been through right if you actually take and look at what has happened in in, in the past is um, you know, we have been in mainframes and then there was databases and then we have data warehouse appliances where, they, you know, uh, where uh, everybody thought that they can actually optimize the software and the hardware and put it on a, put it, put it on, a uh, on appliance. And then we have come to, you know, big data. Now it is a combination of big data and cloud and serverless technologies where you don't even know where the data is getting processed, what infrastructure, you, you are just only worried about your SLAs. Right. So in this journey, I think I think what has stayed like one of the things that always you know has come back and you know uh, when we look at the different pieces is you always have challenges around skills and resources because of the the, the everything is evolving. You want to be able to use reuse components and a lot of times when you write an application, you know it becomes brittle and you know you want to change things. How do you ensure that you actually have resiliency in the application building and you know you can reuse the blocks? And then the third thing is, how do you rapidly accelerate the 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 you know uh, the deployment of these applications? Uh, because every time things change, you want to be able to accelerate you know and 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 accelerate the development process and not be bogged down by what are the changes that are happening in the industry. So I think keeping that in mind, what we wanted to do uh, with CDAP, I, I, this is the original vision, and we we refined the vision at Google, and we are investing heavily is. We want to provide the community with a secure, reliable, best-in-class, enterprise, cloud-ready analytics application platform with all the comprehensive capabilities built in so that you can connect data, you can govern the data, you can actually get insights into the data, and finally, to enable the users and the community to democratize the data. Ultimately, the power is in you know, democratizing the data so that if you are an enterprise, 
you want your everybody in the enterprise to get access to the data so that they can actually get new insights if you are you know actually building an application for an open source community still you want to build a platform where you can actually take you know gain valuable insights into the data so our goal has been how do we provide a platform so that everybody can build on it now the second thing that we have done at google is one strategy that we have taken is we have ensured that any time we actually are enhancing the the you know our own you know enterprise offerings and things like that we are actually continuing to invest in the cdap platform and we actually make changes in cdap platform we make the same functionality available available in the cdap platform so that all the users and the entire community can take advantage of it the third thing that i want to talk about is you know um, we have invested very heavily in the past two years i think you know one of the things that i will talk about is uh, you know all the all the great things that we have added in the past two years and what's coming in 2021 right so if you look at the data and cloud ecosystem right this is just a piece of it it's all these blogs that exist you know you have kubernetes your microservices there is governance requirements there are enterprise integrations uh, you know you have ai ml and these are all blocks precariously arranged together so what our thought was what happens if we actually take all these blocks and 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 you know and take the traditional approach and refine it and make it into the the the, the modern approach so if you look at the traditional approach you know it was purely on big data infrastructure there were all these offerings you have hadoop spark kafka and there are millions more right you know we don't even you know because that is where things get brittle and how do you do build applications customers have been traditionally relying on building their own do it yourself kits where they build their own application their own solutions and what happens is this is tightly coupled to the infrastructure now if you want to take it into the cloud you can't like you know how do you take it into the cloud it becomes very very brittle uh, if you want to change from one framework to another framework then what happens like if you go back and look at you know at some point we were looking at map reduce now we are talking about spark processing uh, you know god knows tomorrow there might be another new data processing engine right so when you build anything with do it yourself you are actually building a brittle application that is tightly coupled to it the other approach is you know there is a lot of times you know we actually use tools so you can actually use tools and 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 say hey you know what i'm going to just use a tool on this but again there are so many tools and vendors and you know you will always have to have this vendor lock in that you need to you know be careful about there are tool specific languages that are available um, you know there is also integration is still a big missing piece so when we talked about cdap right we said okay what happens if we provide all the core functionalities available as a platform and then we can actually provide certain accelerators on top of our platform so that you can actually start doing building your solution now what that what does that mean uh, if you if you you know go back and look at you know what we say is there are some core foundational components that you need in the platform anytime right the core foundational platforms can range from metadata services to connectivity to monitoring so let me break down each one of them right when you are building a, 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 a an integration application or an anal analytics application first thing that you need is a you need connectivity connectivity is is generally a commodity but it is very tedious to build so you know for databases it's very simple you can actually go and say hey you know what i've got uh, some sort of jdbc odbc connector and i can actually use it but when you get into the larger space of like you know if you get into mainframes or messaging systems applications it's not easy right and 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 connectors like you know there are so many applications i think you know one of the research uh, by idc was saying that the, on an average enterprise has about 400 distinct sources now how do how do how do the customers or anybody who wants to build connectivity have to like you know have to actually build connectivity and in in, in if you have to build your own application it's very very hard so one of the things that we have said is what happens if we build a connectivity layer add all the connectors we have got 200 plus connectors and make them available for the community so that anybody who wants to connect to any system they should be looking elsewhere and you know if you, there is any special you know esoteric connector that the community wants to build they can always build and, and and give it back to the community so connectivity is a foundation layer right 
The second thing that when you talk about integration platform or analytics applications is um, the metadata services, right? Metadata is very, very critical. I mean, it's not just for, you know, isolating design time, runtime, and all that stuff, but it is also important for governance. Nowadays, I think, you know, you can see that there is a lot more emphasis on, on, on compliance. There are a lot more regulations around how you actually distribute data, share data within an enterprise, um, within outside of enterprise, with the partners. There is a lot of emphasis. And in order to make sure that you have a complete governance control structure, you need to have proper metadata services where you have a single place where you can store all the metadata. You can also, you are able to get insights into you know, the lineage information, the impact information about, you know, what is going on with this metadata. And I think that becomes a foundational layer. And it's not easy to implement a metadata service. Uh, you also need, as part of it, the third important component is security, right? So every time when you actually have a tool that you use or you build your own application, what happens is you have to have your own security model. You have to build your own security model and you have to say, Hey, you know what? Um, you know you might have your own, you know, authentication model, or you might have your own single sign-on model that you want to actually. You need a security framework that actually can help you do this, and you need to have, you know, things like isolation of, you know, design and runtime environments. Like for example, you want to be able to use the same platform, but you want to be able to isolate certain sets to a, you know, to a particular set of users, so that each set of users is not looking at other sets of users and what they are doing. So our security model, I think we created a security model along with namespaces and everything so that you can actually isolate it. We have got authentication mechanisms. In fact, we are actually enhancing it so that you can actually uh, integrate with other third-party single sign-on uh, security frameworks as well. On top of it, you need versioning, you know, lifecycle management of all the artifacts that you are building. Um, and I think it's complete without a complete cohesive, uh, a comprehensive monitoring service, right? Because every time when you actually have this platform, you added this capabilities and you are building your integration mechanisms, uh, you need a monitoring framework. Um, and, and, and these are like the foundational blocks. Now, what does it mean is like, you know, when we looked at, like we created this foundational blocks and when we, we said, okay, how do we leverage this platform integration for integration? Obviously, you can do a lot more than integration with our CDAP platform because it allows you to build your analytical applications. And I'll talk about how we were able to leverage the same platform to actually provide persona-specific use cases and how we draw the persona-specific use cases. Uh, so the foundation principles, principles where like, you know, when we look back at CDAP is, look, how do we make sure that we empower all personas? Because in an, in an enterprise, there are a lot of different personas like, you can have, you know, your ETL developers, data engineers, you know, data scientists, you know, citizen integrators, just app, app developers. Uh, you need to have a single platform that can empower all their personas. We need to ensure that we need to have good business IT collaboration. So I talk about this a lot more because I think a lot of times things get lost in translation when technical teams are talking to the business and, you know, the requirements are lost in translation because no one understands, you know, uh, a similar language. So how do you ensure that there's a lot more collaboration between business and IT? How do you avoid a hairball problem where you're doing point-to-point -point integrations from, you know, A to B and, you know, B to C and, you know, C to A, et cetera? Uh, you have to be able to scale at will. So this is where the platform becomes really, really powerful is, like, you know, if you tie to a particular runtime execution environment, then you cannot really scale because you might want to move. There are multiple reasons why you want to be able to move your execution environments to different setups. So the platform itself, the way we have designed the platform is that you can run it on you know, any of your Apache Hadoop, but if you want to take it and run it with any other cloud vendor, uh, you can run it on Google Cloud. You can run it on any other multi-cloud vendors. You can actually take the same thing and run it. You can run this platform in the cloud you can run this platform on on-premise. And what that has enabled us to do is then we started looking at applications that are very specific to personas. Like we looked at data wrangling. Uh, data wrangling is for data analysts, technical data analysts, uh, data engineers use a lot of data wrangling for data preparation and moving data into data lakes. Uh, we looked at 
you know, the standard ETL type of pipelines where you are actually loading data into data warehouses and data marts. Um, we also have rules where you you are a business user and you want to actually trigger data integration based on business rules. Uh, so we have started looking at these applications and, and, and what we have done is we actually have created a platform. A lot of these are already available right now. So we have just launched replication app, which means that if you want to create an operational reporting uh, system, you can actually use replication. So this was added and you know this is available in CDAP right now. And anybody who wants to replicate data from traditional like databases to actually create an operational reporting, you can actually use replication. We had added ETL mechanism where you can actually build really complex pipelines. We've got you know 200 plus transformation capabilities where you can actually do joins, aggregations, whatever you want to do from an enterprise data integration standpoint to take the data and load it into a warehouse or a data map. We also have complete data preparation functionality where you can actually take the data and wrangle the data. You can not only wrangle the data and then you can operationalize it by turning it into a pipeline and running at scale. We also have you know, ingestion mechanisms where actually you can just simply ingest data into, you know, for your either it's migration use cases or but what we are actually envisioning our platform to be is in the future is going into a, a you know building more applications like you know we want to be able to help out instead of doing mappings and and pipelines you want to be able to do smart data mappings where we are actually going to give you next best, best actions with embedded ai and ml so that you don't have to actually build these pipelines we want to actually make it as easy as possible provide a common control plane where you can actually take it and run it anywhere you want so so with that, I think I wanted to, you know, what are the apps that are available today? The apps that are available today, we have a ETL and ELT app for your data integration and data warehousing use case. We have a replication app for operational reporting. Uh, there is a data ingestion app uh, that you can use for migrations and data lakes. Uh, there is a wrangling app for business IT collaboration and you want to do data preparation for data lakes and, uh, uh, and, and, and or, or data lakes or even accelerating you know, data warehouse use cases as well. And we also have a, like, you know, healthcare related heat is reporting app that's available. Now, what you will see when we keep, you know, marching into 2021 and 2022 beyond is that we will be building these apps. And the only reason we were able to accelerate building these applications is because we have this comprehensive platform which allows you to do all the building blocks are all already available and we can build these apps as quickly as possible. So this is uh, kind of very important to note that it is deviating from the traditional way of looking at integration stack where you're building a tool. What we have built is a platform and when you build an app, it becomes a tool. So you can build any number of tools that you have. So this platform allows you to have, you know, if you want to just build a, uh, a, a simple, you know, screwdriver, you can do it, but if you want to build a Swiss Army knife, you can do it as well, right? That's the reason we have been able to accelerate and, and, and build these apps. Now, what are the data delivery patterns? This becomes very critical too. I think it's not just building the apps and everything. The other important thing that happens is, how do you, like, you know, what are the data delivery patterns that, that are critical, right? Now, all these data delivery patterns are already, you know, supported, you know, within our platform. Like, for example, the we understand that, the delivery patterns can be dependent on use cases. Like sometimes you want to just do streaming workloads because you want to get real time insights into as the data is moving, right? Or you want to have ETL, ELT kind of workloads where you want to say, I want to build a data warehouse and data mart and take the norm, uh, uh, normalized data and put it into a snowflake and start schema. Or you want to do, be able to build an operational reporting system through replic replication. Now, all of these, data delivery patterns are available in a single platform. But if you look at the traditional way of doing things is you would have one tool for each of them. And when you try to look at, okay, I want to use the metadata from one tool to another tool, you don't have metadata consistency. You don't have, connectivity is not available. The security model is not unified across these things. The monitoring is not available across uh, all of these data delivery patterns. So the advantage with the CAS data application platform is that you can actually leverage all these common components, have different, solve different use cases that actually, you know, with any of these data delivery patterns. Now, 
if you go back and say, okay, what are the personas that we want to empower, right? The personas that we want to empower is obviously, you know, uh, from an integration standpoint, you have your traditional citizen integrator, ETL developer, a data engineer, you know, um, we already do that. But we also have, you know, play, you know, the platform also enables and empowers personas like a data operator. If you want to do monitoring, uh, you want to do, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, isolation of design and runtime. Uh, you want to actually have, uh, uh, you know, we, we can actually have, you know, access controls and, you know, you want to manage a single, you know, unified security layer. We also allow you to build apps. I think one of the things that I urge this community is look at the platform and try to see if there is any new apps that you can build in. Because like, you know, if you, if you think that there is a new app, we would like to collaborate with the community and see what, how we can actually build it. So, I mean, you know, I want to, I want to talk about, like, you know, I, I talked about the connectivity. The reason is you can accelerate building of these apps because we have all these connectors available, you know, for you for free to be able to go and leverage today and to start building these apps. And I, 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 I just want to talk about why we are differentiated. A, we are again, you know, at Google, we believe in open source. We believe in community. A lot of our cloud enterprise offerings, the managed offerings are coming from an open source community, right? We actually are sponsoring and we are investing heavily into it. You have complete end-to-end -end application lifecycle management that's available within our platform. There is metadata sharing between applications. So you can be in a Wrangler or ETL or, you know, rules. You still share the same metadata layer. Um, you know, the unified security model is critical. And I'm going to tie this back to our Google managed platform after this um, universal connectivity layer. Everything is microservices enabled. I think, I think a lot of times you will see that, you know, microservices is in the forefront. You can stitch things easily with microservices. Every single thing that you do from persisting the metadata to, you know, building a pipeline to running a pipeline, Everything is a microservice. So you can actually automate the entire thing. Um, you know, we have customers actually doing this today. Uh, we also, you know, CDAP also supports edge hybrid multi-cloud deployments. You can take this and run it in any cloud, any data center, anywhere you want. And it has complete testing frameworks built into it. All you have to do is integrate, um, you know, uh, a lot of these testing frameworks you integrate your tests into it and you can actually, everything is run as part of this testing frameworks. There are performance frameworks and built into it. So with this, you know, this is the last slide and I want to talk about what is cloud data fusion. So we saw that the power of the platform is where, you know, we feel like, you know, we could leverage and offer something for our enterprise customers. So we took the same platform, right? We took the same platform and they said, we managed into a managed, uh, you know, integration platform on, on on Google Cloud, where you can actually, you know, same components are being used. We have the same applications available, wrangling, you know, ETL pipelines, replication, a common monitoring. We are actually working on new things. But but what I wanted to share is at Google, we are completely invested into this platform. This is our offering, and you know we we continue to whenever we are going to offer a build a new application, a new connector, a new capability in the platform that will be available to the entire community to take to take advantage. If you want a managed platform, obviously you can come to us and use Cloud Data Fusion. But if you want to build your own data fusion, if your own you want to build your own application and on CDA, we are more than happy to support it. And you know we encourage all the all the you know, uh, all of you, you know, joining us on this journey to make this platform, um, you know, more robust, scalable, and and we we love your feedback, right? So I, with that, I'm going to end. And your last note I want to say is, you know, when I, you know, I I I, you know, I was fortunate enough to be working on this platform. Uh, we have we launched a new documentation site. We have pretty much documented every single functionality of the platform, which was very lacking uh, previously. So you can actually go to our type in CDAP documentation and you'll get to a Confluence site and all the documentation will be there. So um, with that, Alma, you know, I think I think I'm, um, you know, I want to hand over it to you. Thanks a lot for uh, your attention and we are here for questions.